what to wear on weekends, what to wear casually. It is a topic of conversation that comes up frequently because when you're working and you're feeling really put together and work, when it comes to weekend wear or coming home, you're pulling on things that maybe just don't feel right. So how can you explore something outside of what you already know? Because I know that leggings are really easy to go to. I mean, a lot of people don't use it for just working out. They end up being what they wear to drop off and pick up with the kids or what they're wearing on weekends to the park. Like leggings are kind of a go-to, but not because it looks really put together or feels that great on. It's just kind of like you go on a cycle of just getting what works for you because you know it worked for you in the past and it's easy. But there are other options that you can explore. If you've also been kind of stuck in like, oh, I'm wearing like jeans and a t-shirt, but I want to feel more cute. I want to feel more put together, but how do I look put together without feeling like overdressed or like I can't wear this to the park or I can't wear this on the walk. So obviously when you're thinking about what to wear, a big part of it is also thinking about what are you going to do? Because that is a huge aspect in what you're picking out. You want something usually that is more functional during the weekend. You want something that especially now that it's sunny out, probably something that is more lighter weight, something that breathes very well. So when you're sweating and moving around and going for a walk, you don't feel like you're wearing the wrong thing. In today's podcast episode, I want to talk about what to look for in casual wear and what is holding you back. What are things that you might be saying to yourself or thinking mindset wise that are holding you back from being able to explore more. Before we get into it, I just want to thank you for spending time with me today. This is an episode that you're going to want to come back to, to listen in and see what you can do differently because I'm all about just real talk. The real talk about what goes into personal style, how to explore what works for you. You do not have to be into fashion to look put together and to be stylish. So these are things that you can learn along the way. If you're listening while you're driving, this is a great episode that you can just listen to. You don't have to take notes, but if you take one thing away today, put it into practice, I would love to hear about it. Stop, pause the podcast afterwards, give me a review and let me know what you learned today because I want to be able to talk more about what you're curious about, what is igniting like these aha moments as you're listening to the podcast. To give you a little glimpse into my own world in my casual wear as a personal stylist, I know there are for the most part on Instagram, you see a lot of me very put together, even on the podcast. I'm not one to do a podcast episode where I'm not dressed up because I'm usually recording these podcast episodes when I have client meetings over Zoom or in person. So I always am put together on the podcast, but on weekends when I have my kids, my style is very different. I do try to keep feminine touches in the way I get dressed. So for example, two of my favorite outfits right now that I am loving that I bought for when we went to Disney World and I'm still wearing it are a pair of olive green cargo pants. And I know you might be cringing as you hear me say uh, olive green cargo pant, but I promise you they look so polished and put together for casual wear. This cargo pant is actually tapered. So, um, it just, it just fits really nicely. It's very flattering. So I wear this olive green cargo pant and I wear a fitted Henley top and a denim jacket. And that is like a huge go-to for me. Another outfit I wear often is a ribbed crop top, not like a crop top that shows like a lot of my belly, just where it hits at my waist with my pants. Um, I wear that with a baggy mid-rise denim and I love this baggy mid-rise denim. It is by Denim Forum. If you haven't heard about them, they sell Denim Forum at Aritzia. And I also put on over a stripe top that I love, a stripe button-down shirt. I roll up the sleeves and wear kind of just like a layering piece. And those two are my favorite go-tos for the weekend when I'm with the kids. Obviously, when I'm doing other things weekend-wise, I dress up a little bit more, but I want you to hear about like the variety of ways that you can put something together for a weekend wear outside of what you're probably wearing now. 
And these are phrases that you might be telling yourself that are stopping you from trying something new and from exploring your casual wear. So if you resonate with any of these, I want you to keep listening. You can't wear denim on denim. Jeans are the only casual pant option available. Blazers are not considered casual wear. I cannot wear 90s trends again because I already have been there and done that. And five, crop tops do not work at my age. So these are the five topics that we're going to explore today. And I want to start with the first, that you can't wear denim on denim. I know it. this actually is part 90s like themed, but sometimes we set these rules for ourselves that worked for a little bit, but now can be broken. So some of the things that you had as a rule for yourself or maybe a fashion rule that you had heard of before, it is okay to break it and let it go and try something different. So denim on denim, I am loving. You can do a light colored denim jacket on top of a light colored denim jean and it looks so good together. I'm trying to even think, have I seen somebody do denim on denim that I did not like recently? And I can't think, I can't think of a denim on denim I don't like, but you can do like the blue denim on blue denim. You could do a beige denim on a light colored denim. I do have to say that right now, the biggest trend is lighter colored denim. I know that if you consider yourself like more of a classic style personality that you love that darker denim, but I promise you if you try a lighter colored denim, you'll fall in love with it. And it doesn't even have to be like a really light wash. It could be more of a medium wash and it will go with so many pieces. It will lighten up your look as well. So denim on denim, is okay. I promise you, if you put something on that's denim on denim and someone says something, just tell them. I heard on this podcast, the Make It You podcast, that Tanya Bernadette said that I could do denim on denim, so I am rocking this today. That's how confident I feel about it. Try denim on denim, it looks great. Number two, that jeans are the only casual pant option. Let me just say that there are just so many different ways. I'm gonna blow your mind today with all the different things that you could wear casually, but jeans are not the only option when it comes to casual wear. And the same goes to leggings. Like you can wear something outside of leggings or jeans and still dress casually, still dress comfortably. I would say that one of my personal favorites are like linen pants, linen pants that you can just put on and throw a t-shirt on. It just feels very chic to wear those. You could do sandals of all different kinds with them. If you wanna do a wedge, you can wear a wedge, but linen pants for springtime are like a must have. And they aren't just for vacation wear, you can wear them around town. I know that being in Seattle, Washington, it is, (laughs) linen is not like the number one item that people need, but we still enjoy a good linen pant or a good linen blazer. So linen pants, definitely worth trying. Another thing that you can do too is there are variations of a cargo pant or more of like a chic like cotton pant that's more tapered that you can wear. Usually they tend to be in different color options so depending what feels good to you. If you're at this point where you are just building your wardrobe you do want to stick to neutrals or um, I would say like neutral sort of colors that are softer that are easy to mix and match. So if you're watching me on YouTube, I'm wearing this very bright red top. Do not get bright red pants if you're really starting to create a good foundation to your wardrobe. You're gonna wanna get something maybe in like a soft pink or a soft orange or even more of like a sage green because there's so much green going on. So think of more neutral, softer colors when you are building your wardrobe and especially with pants because you want those pants to go with multiple things when you're building a wardrobe you need less bottoms and more tops so you want to make sure that you have that kind of like dynamic with the pieces that you're purchasing but yeah jeans are not the only thing so linen pants cargo pants you could even try a jogger if you're looking for something casually that maybe you could go for a walk in or something you can do a jogger pant. They're not as popular as they were, um, I would say 2020 
at the height of the pandemic, but they are still available and still a different option outside of leggings. And brands like Athleta, brands like Lululemon do a really good job of creating joggers that can be more functional and stylish. So you don't have to compromise style for function with those brands, which is really awesome. And if you have a more active lifestyle, you do want to consider pieces like that, that feel like you can transition from like a walk to going to lunch after. And one thing I almost forgot to share with you before I go on about jeans not being the only pant option is Madewell. I cannot even believe I almost forgot to share this with you. Madewell for the past few seasons has carried a trouser pant. Yes, a trouser pant that you can wear with sneakers that you can wear with a Henley. You can wear it with a t-shirt. You can wear it with a tank top and they are super comfortable. So if you have been in skinny jeans, I am not bashing you for wearing skinny jeans. Rock those skinny jeans if you feel really good in them. But let me just let me just be honest. A lot of my clients have been trying pants that are wider leg feel so much more comfortable in wider leg pants that they don't even know how they've been living in skinny jeans for the past few years. It makes a huge difference. And with these Mabel pants, they are pleated and they look so good every season they come out with new colors one of my clients the other day just bought this bright green it is on sale right now so i'm not sure if you'll be able to find it anymore but it's like a brighter green on bottom for springtime and they look so good and she just wears it with like a black top black sandals and she's good to go so even trouser pants in a cotton material can be worn casually number three blazers are not considered casual wear oh my gosh okay i've had a few clients where when we're shopping for stuff and trying things on like layering pieces which you know if you are thinking about layering a t-shirt you do need something other than a cardigan sometimes like a cardigan can often look sloppy if it's not done properly especially like the older ones that are like baggy and big with like the flapping fabric if you have that in your closet i do recommend just like letting that go finding something a bit more like structured and nice that fits on your body really well where you don't feel like you're hiding it um but going back to the blazers blazers are super easy to wear like you can wear it to work with a dress pant. You could wear it with a dress that's casual and roll up the sleeves. You could wear it to work with a skirt. Like there are so many options. And one that you might not have even considered is wearing a blazer with a pair of denim. And you could wear, I mean, different kinds of denim. Like I, the other day rocked my denim forum, like that baggy jean and I wore a blazer with it and a ribbed top by Vince and super polished, super put together. And I was running errands and it was comfortable. So I think sometimes people think that blazers cannot be considered casual wear because they're thinking of the blazers that they used to wear five, seven, ten years ago that feel really restricted where you don't really have room to move in where it's like lined even i'm exaggerating but like double lined where you're like oh my gosh this thing like is not comfortable like how am i gonna walk around and do anything in this like those blazers that you have to take off when you're driving because like it's so tight like that is not the blazer i'm talking about i'm talking about a relaxed blazer something in a rougher fabric that can go good with jeans not the blazer from your old suit when i'm telling you to put a blazer and denim together this goes for both men and women and the majority of people listening to this are women but this goes for both men and women don't take the blazer apart from your old pantsuit and try to put that together and then say oh my gosh i can't wear blazers with jeans no you have to actually go out and buy a new blazer whether that is linen cotton something that is not stretchy but it's unlined so it feels more relaxed and i'm just i'm just gonna say it you can do shoulder pads I have some blazers with shoulder pads. I absolutely love it. They're more, they are definitely more of a power look. If you are looking for something more casual, then yes, I do recommend something without the shoulder pads, but don't be afraid to try it. So that is the whole point of this for casual wear. Go into a store and explore blazers with denim. Number four, I can't wear any 90s trends because I've already been there and I've done that. 
I can't tell you how many times I've heard this when I've been working with clients over Zoom or we've been in the fitting room together. And then as I show them how to style it or try it on, it changes. Like the way that they think about the 90s trends changes because what has happened is yes, 90s are definitely back, but you have to interpret it for what it is now. You have to interpret it for where you are at in your life now. I think I talked about this in a separate podcast episode and I shared this on Instagram stories today, but there was a day a couple of months ago where I put together like this really cool 90s look. I do have to say it was slightly more trendy than what I normally wear, but I really want to just like have fun with my outfit that day. And the only way I could put it is I looked like Phoebe from Friends. If you have ever watched the show, you know, I looked like Phoebe from Friends, but like the elevated more um chic version and it was like awesome it was like a whole thing i should make a tiktok video or something showing like phoebe and friends and her up and how she did it and then my interpretation of it in 2024 and how elevated it was because i was wearing like this like theory top and i think like a vince oversized blazer or something but Anyways, it just looks so cute. It had the tank top over the t-shirt, which I never do, but I did for work that day. And it just, it was like the perfect outfit. It was the best way to show you how to interpret a 90s trend from back in the day, but make it more polished and chic for where you are now. So when you're thinking about 90s trends, yes, you might have in your head like how you used to wear or the brands that you were wearing in the 90s. And you're like, oh my gosh, cringe, cringe moment can't do that but i can tell you that if you find the right pieces now as you're putting things on together and they are more elevated so when i'm saying 90s trends i'm not saying go to the junior department or go to target and buy 90s trends because that is going to make you feel like oh my gosh i cannot do this but when you do the 90s trends in nicer brands like reformation or Alice and Olivia, or other brands like that, I promise you that when you put that piece on and for that price tag, you're gonna be like, oh, okay, I get it. Number five, I can't wear crop tops at my age. I do have to say this is a a big misconception. I work with women from age 20 plus, and let me just say that it really does not matter your age it is more of what is important to you what you value how you see yourself what your lifestyle is like what your career is what you are doing day to day like there are other things that come around it that sometimes we think it's our age but it's also maybe the way that we see our body and where our life is at and what our status is in our life or you know there are so many other things that go around it so crop tops you can wear at different ages and there are different versions of crop tops. So with my clients that are busy professionals doing like big things in the world, they're not necessarily wearing the ones that look like a bra or showing a ton of skin. When I say crop tops, they're ones that like cut off at the waist. If you're wearing a high waist pant, it like, it doesn't really show. Okay, we went through it. We went through the thing. I hope that you took something away from this that is going to take your casual wear to the next level because now you feel confident to take one of these things, go into a store and explore something new and take away this mindset that you had before, this blindfold you had of things that you can't do or try and go in there and do something new and grab something different than what you had been wearing before. Have fun. Casual wear is meant to be more fun anyways. You get to add some color, add some print, Don't just think about it as something functional. With casual, you can be more fun because there are no rules like there are for like workwear sometimes. So go out, have fun with it. Find something that you feel like you'll be able to gravitate to every time you go to your closet. Find those pieces that you're like, I like this so much and it fits my life and body so well that I'm gonna grab it all the time when I go out. And you know what? If you have tried to piece together your style for months or years and you still don't feel like you have a cohesive wardrobe, let's do this together. I have 
a free webinar coming up on how to build a capsule wardrobe. It's on May 8th or 9th. If you go to the link in the show notes or even go to myclosetedit.com or go to my Instagram, wherever you are following me, you can find how to sign up on how to build a capsule wardrobe. I wanna share with you my strategy to go from feeling like you have boring basics and things that don't feel cohesive to creating an easy to mix and match wardrobe that really lights you up. That is what I help people do. That is what I've been doing for 15 years and I want to show you how to do this as well. If you didn't know this yet, the most important part of shopping is to first build that good foundation to your wardrobe by creating this capsule that brings things together so that next time you shop, next time you want something fun and different, you have pieces that you can create multiple outfits with. So if you have been struggling to figure out how to put together your wardrobe, what your style is, what is the capsule wardrobe anyways? Why are people talking about this? I want to see you there on May 8th or 9th. So I want to have you just pause this episode, go into the show notes and sign up so that you can make it. And if those two dates don't work for you, still sign up because you'll get a replay. I'm going to be checking in on you. I want to hold you accountable for making this shift in your life if it is something that you have been wanting to do for so long and have been struggling with. Because what I hear from clients again and again is that they wish that they had found me sooner because they had wasted so much money on time, scrolling online, buying things that didn't fit, buying things that they didn't even wear enough. So I want to show you how to shift the way that you're shopping and how you're addressing to create a capsule wardrobe that really fits you best. Thank you for spending time with me today. I really enjoy this time that we have together. And if you're on the webinar, we get to talk more. You can ask questions along the way. Thank you so much for spending time with me today and continue building a life and a style that truly reflect you. And I'll catch you next time.